Today's scripture is in, from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 17, 4 through 13, excuse me. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The ending of God's word for today. So just a few more verses there for you, <clears throat> uh, starting at 10. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed, of going hungry, of having plenty, and of being in need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So this week, we're going to continue our series on gratitude and joy. Last week, we talked about how we need to come into worship with a sense of gratitude and joy whenever possible. And we talked about how we might not be able to have joy at all times when we come into church because life is hard. But we did say that we should always be able to come in to church with a sense of gratitude. So my challenge last week for you was to do just that. Make sure that you come in to worship this week with a sense of gratitude. Well, how did you do? Good. Oh, great. So hopefully you did do really well. Now, maybe you're just now remembering that that is what we talked about last week. And if so, hey, what better time than now to show God your gratitude during worship, right? What better time than right now to think about those things you are grateful for? So this week, we're going to talk about if we should be a people that are full of gratitude and joy just because... We are followers of Christ. So I have a question for you then. Should someone be able to tell if you are a Christian? Should someone that is just passing by be able to look at you and know that you are a Christian? Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, yes, absolutely, they should be able to tell if you're a Christian. But if that is the case, then how should they be able to tell? Is it the cross that you wear around your neck? Is it the fish bumper sticker you have? Should we all just get shirts that say, hi, I'm a Christian, and wear them everywhere we go? See, this question is one that seems to be easy to answer, but in fact, it may not be as simple as it first seems to be. We know that only God truly knows our hearts. And we know that God only knows who is a Christian and who is not. Now I'm going to tell you a story and I don't want you to feel as if I'm pointing fingers here because that is not my intent. But I am reminded of something that somebody once told me. You see, this person had grown up their entire life in the church. They had been brought each and every Sunday. 
they had listened to the sermons each week and they had sang with all that they had during the worship songs. But they found that their life still felt empty. See, they felt empty inside. Until one day they went into a church and the pastor said to them that morning, you know, it is possible for you to have been in the church your entire life and never really accepted Jesus. So the man began to think back upon his own life and he realized that is exactly where he found himself. He had gone to church. He had listened and he had tried but in the end, he had never said those words, Jesus, come into my life. Lord, I claim you as my Savior. So on that day, he did just that. And he found that his heart was now full for the first time in his life. Now, I tell you that story because, first of all, I don't want any of you here today to fall into that same category that he did. And I tell you that story secondly, because it is not easy to identify someone as a Christian just by looking at them. That person you would have thought was a Christian easily, right? In church every Sunday, from the time he was little till he was grown. But in truth, that did not make him a Christian. Though it is impossible for us to look at a person and know that they are a Christian simply by what we see when we look at them, I do believe it is possible for us to see when someone is a Christian by the way that they live their lives. You see, if we are Christians, then what is our goal in this life? Well, it is to live according to the teachings of Jesus Christ, right? Is that our goal? Or is our goal to simply sit back and do nothing and wait to collect our salvation at the end of our lives? Well, church, I, I pray that is not what you are doing as a Christian. See, our faith should show by how we love God and how we love others. Our faith should show by how we set our priorities. And our faith should show because of the gratitude that we have in our lives. Which brings us to our scripture for today as Paul is writing to the church in Philippi with a message similar to that, telling them to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always and let your gentleness be known to everyone. How can we think of that in other words? Well, I think it's safe for us to say rejoicing is the act of having joy. So have joy in the Lord always. How about letting your gentleness be known? And just a side note there, this is an entirely different sermon. We won't get too far into it today. Um, but how different is that than what the world tells you to do? Let your gentleness be known. The world tells you don't ever show gentleness to anyone, right? The world tells you to be hard and stubborn about everything that you think. Not what we are to do. Let your gentleness be known. Well, letting your gentleness be known, you can do that by, by showing your gratitude and your kindness to everyone, by letting those things be known to them. Paul continues to tell them not to worry and to lift all things up to God in prayer. And we can look at that as making sure we're giving all things to God and the gratitude to him for all that he is doing for us. So that the peace will guard your hearts and minds. And Paul goes on to show them his own gratitude. We didn't have our screen this morning, so if you weren't following along in your Bible, the second heading um, to the scripture today says, Paul expresses his gratitude. So if you want an example of someone just doing that, Paul shows us, right? Thank you for thinking of me. I am fine, essentially, is what Paul tells them. But he closes with his, one of the most quoted verses of Scripture, right? One that I think we're all familiar with. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What powerful words of joy and gratitude to Jesus, right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
Now we know that that is how we should be living our lives, right? We know that we should be living life that is full of gratitude and joy for God, and yet we struggle to do so. Have you ever met someone that says they are a Christian, and yet they are the most miserable person you have ever met in your entire life? And now I don't mean you meet someone once and you know that they're a Christian, right? And they're having a bad day. We all have bad days, right? Absolutely. But I mean someone that you know and you've spent time with them and yet they seem to be miserable at all times. Well, I have to tell you that when I meet someone like that, someone that pro proclaims to be a Christian and yet they are miserable about all things at all times, I question my own faith. I question if I have misread the scriptures. I question if I am living how Jesus wants me to. And I do that because either I am wrong about having gratitude and joy in my life because of all that God has done for me, or they are wrong for being miserable about all things in their life because what God has done for them. You see, it can't be both ways, right? So I find myself wondering if I am wrong, if my thoughts and interpretations are wrong. Now, so far, they haven't convinced me of that. They haven't convinced me that God wants, to be, wants me to be miserable in all things, and I pray that they never do. Please understand, though, I know that this world is broken. I know that there are terrible things happening everywhere. I know that a lot of us are struggling to make our way in this world. I get that. I might be full of joy and gratitude, but I am not naive. For me, though, I am able to face this world because of the gratitude that I have for what God has done for me. I can face this world because of the gratitude I have for Jesus Christ, who willingly went to the cross to take away my sins. And I can find joy among the sorrow in this world because I know that this is not my home. I'm just a passing through as the old hymn says. See, finding ways to show, show gratitude and joy in this world can and do really make a difference in your life and in the lives of others. You know, last week I, I told you about a friend of mine that was always happy, right? Always grateful for all the things in his life. And I told you that this week I'd tell you a little bit more about his story. Well, in order to do that, to tell you more about his story, I have to tell you about another friend of mine. See, this young lady was always happy as well. Always seemed to have a smile on her face, and she was always looking for the best in people. I don't think I ever heard a crossword come out of her mouth. About 10 years ago, I was attending the wedding of another friend of mine from high school, and I happened to run into this young lady. And she was, of course, happy to see me. And uh, the same way she was happy to see everyone that she hadn't seen in a while. I, I was nothing special. Uh, she was just happy because, to see me because she was happy. And she said, Eric, wait, hold on. One second, Eric, hold on. Let me go get my husband and introduce him to you. So I waited, and, and who did she bring to meet me? Well, you might have guessed it. It was my friend that I was talking about last week. So he and I, we both laughed as she introduced us to one another, knowing that we had known each other for 15 years at this point. And she asked, well, why are you two laughing so much? And, and we told her, well, you know, we've known each other all these years. And she was amazed that we had known each other, but they hadn't. You see, these two had lived in the same town together. We were all the same age, but went to different schools. See, I knew him from playing soccer on the club team in our area, and I knew her from our school that we went together, but they didn't know each other. And they didn't know each other until we had all gotten out of school. Now they're married. They're raising a wonderful little girl who indeed has a smile that lights up the world. 
And I tell you that story because it is amazing how being full of gratitude and joy can bring about good things in this world. Because when, we're fixed, when they were fixed up by their friends, it was because they were both such joyful people and their friends thought that they should meet. What a wonderful testament to living a life of gratitude and joy. Now, as I said earlier, sometimes we meet people that are Christians and they're miserable. Which brings me to this. If we're to share the joy of Jesus with others, how can we ever do it if we're miserable ourselves? How can we expect others to want to come to Jesus if all they ever see of Christians is that they're fighting with one another, arguing with one another, and putting each other down? How can we expect them to come to Jesus if we take everything that he has done for us for granted? It's awful hard to win the hearts and minds of people for Jesus if we can't find a single thing to tell them about that we are grateful about what he has done for us. So let us commit ourselves to being a people that show others our gratitude for God. And let us be a people that show others our joy in the Lord. My challenge for you this week is this. Name one thing you are grateful for that God has given to you. And then do your best to take your joy to others. Amen.